France just discovered 46 million tons of white hydrogen underground in Fauchevillet, the second such discovery in as many years. While hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, it's so small and light that it's always proven tricky to find in any abundance here on Earth. And while gray hydrogen produced from steam reforming natural gas is dirty and polluting, and green hydrogen is produced by splitting hydrogen atoms from water using renewable energy sources and is expensive, this pure hydrogen is just sitting there, waiting to be extracted and used much like oil and gas. This sounds like it could be an absolute game changer in the future of energy, so is it? Might there be more such deposits around the world? And could this finally be the break hydrogen needs to live up to the hype as the fuel of the future? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by Ground News. Both hydrogen discoveries occurred in France's northern Lorraine region within the Moselle area. Lorraine is known for its iron-rich soils and a subsequent discovery of mining. In 2023, researchers stumbled upon the first hydrogen deposit while checking for safety risks associated with an abandoned mine. This new discovery in 2025 emerged from a geological assessment aimed at mapping future potential energy deposits. These two discoveries in the same region so close together might suggest that this is just the beginning and that France is sitting on even greater hydrogen reserves. This latest discovery is projected to be around 46 million tons. That's $92 billion in just one deposit. But France is not the only place researchers have found hydrogen. In the 1930s in Adelaide, Australia, oil well drillers reported finding vast amounts of high-purity hydrogen. But at the time, it was considered a useless byproduct with no commercial value. In 1987, in the village of Mali, Africa, a worker attempted to light a cigarette next to a certain water well. And that well unexpectedly caught fire due to natural hydrogen seeping out from the well. A local petroleum company was soon hired to harvest and sell the hydrogen. As of 2023, this Mali hydrogen well remains as the world's first and only economically successful hydrogen well. According to a study in Physics Today from February 2025, trillions of tons of hydrogen gas are likely trapped in the Earth's subsurface, potentially more than enough to meet the projected hydrogen needed to achieve a net zero carbon emission future for about 200 years. So this might just be the beginning of a new golden age of hydrogen. Now you're probably wondering how this hydrogen was created and if natural processes made it, could it be a renewing source of continued hydrogen supply? Well, the main sources of natural hydrogen come from the following. Degassing of deep hydrogen from Earth's crust and mantle, reaction of water with ultra-basic rock in a process called serpentinization, water in contact with reducing agents in Earth's mantle, weathering where water is in contact with freshly exposed surface rock, decomposition of hydroxyl ions in the structure of minerals, natural water radiolysis, decomposition of organic matter, and biological activity. It turns out, though, about 80% of the world's hydrogen is thought to come from serpentinization. Serpentinization is a hydration and metamorphic transformation of ferromagnetic materials. This explains why the iron-rich regions in France would have such large amounts of hydrogen. There are numerous reactions that occur in crustal rock, but this reaction in particular is of interest. Phthalite, an iron-rich crystalline formation, and water react to produce magnetite, silicon dioxide, and pure hydrogen. Now, I couldn't find exact data on the rate of these reactions and how quickly hydrogen is produced and if it would replenish itself fast enough to maintain the need and the demand that we would have on it. But understanding the underlying chemical processes in geology could greatly help with identifying where other hydrogen deposits might be hiding. Researching these videos and finding good information isn't so straightforward. In a recent video I made about the DC plane mishap, I was shocked at how differently the same story was covered depending on the political lean of the publication. But check this out. This is Ground News, a resource I've been using for over two years. In these headlines, left-leaning publications use words like blame, saying Trump tries to freeze federal funding and blames others for plane collision, while right-leaning publications use headlines that read Former Biden FAA boss doesn't dispute Trump's hiring claims. This is leading language, and it colors everything that follows. Another tactic is omission, choosing what parts of a story to cover and what parts to leave out. But Ground News gathers related articles from around the world in one place, shares who owns each publication, its left or right bias, and even the historical factuality. I love Blindspot, a curated section showing stories with little to no reporting from one side or the other. It really helps you see what's getting people on both sides riled up. 
Ground News is mission critical here at Tiba Da Vinci, and a yearly subscription is an absolute bargain, and it's ad-free. So whether you're browsing on the web or your phone, if you want to see every side of every news story, you have to check out Ground News. Use our links in the description and get 40% off of a Vantage plan and get started today. Huge thanks to Ground News and you. Now back to the show. To fully understand how impactful this discovery can be, we must first understand the incredible potential of hydrogen as a fuel source. Here's a table of the energy density, both by weight and volume for hydrogen. As you can see, hydrogen has more energy per kilogram than any fuel other than nuclear, and is over three times higher than gasoline. This means if a Boeing 787 with 127,000 liters of fuel capacity used hydrogen instead, it would save 67,400 kilograms, or about 148,000 pounds in fuel, one third of its full takeoff weight, which is amazing. Now what's less amazing is hydrogen's volumetric energy density. In liquid form, it tops out at about 2.8 kilowatt hours per liter, like the liquid hydrogen used in the space shuttle. And compressed to 700 bars, but still in gaseous form, it's only 1.55 kilowatt hours per liter. This pales in comparison to gasoline's 9.5, meaning that that same Boeing 787 would go from 127,000 liters of jet A fuel to 432,000 liters for hydrogen. If you want to see a full video on the future of hydrogen for air travel, let me know in the comments below. But for a better picture, let's look at the Toyota Mirai, a hydrogen fuel cell EV. The second generation Mirai holds 5.65 kilograms of hydrogen good for 400 miles of range. To achieve a similar range with a battery EV, you'd need 540 kilograms of a Tesla Model S battery pack. But today, over 95% of the hydrogen produced worldwide comes from gray hydrogen, which is a dirty carbon intensive process from natural gas. And if used in that way, it would be better to just use the natural gas directly than to produce hydrogen from it. So gray hydrogen isn't gonna work in the future. Clean green hydrogen is energy intensive and not produced currently in any meaningful volume. This is why here in California, hydrogen costs about $35 per kilogram. So 5.65 kilograms would cost $198 to fill up and cost about 50 cents per mile. Compare that to the Tesla that only costs 10 cents per mile in equivalent electricity at 40 cents per kilowatt hour. And this price problem is what a naturally occurring deposit of hydrogen could potentially disrupt. Imagine if we only had a blueprint for how to make oil and gas, and instead of just finding it naturally in wells underground, we had to actually produce it. It would have never taken off the way it did. And this has been the reality for hydrogen. Rather than a source of fuel to extract, it was a concept and recipe that needed to be created and quite expensively. Did you know that in 1806, Francois Isaac de Riva designed the first internal combustion engine, which ran on hydrogen and oxygen as a mixture, not gasoline. But because of availability of crude oil and scale of oil refinement, it would go on to become the fuel the world over. So if large deposits of hydrogen start popping up and investment in a worldwide hydrogen economy took hold, what would that look like? First, hydrogen has two proven ways to provide useful energy. The first is hydrogen combustion. Much like an internal combustion piston engine or jet engine, hydrogen and oxygen can be mixed, compressed, and ignited via a spark. In this way, hydrogen could prove to be a very clean transition for companies producing internal combustion engines today. Hydrogen has two things going for it. First, it has a wide flammability range meaning it can be mixed with air in a wide range of fuel to air ratios. And by running on a lean mixture where there's less hydrogen present than available air to complete combustion, you could achieve combustion at lower temperatures, which can help reduce emissions. We'll get back to that here in a second. The second thing is high auto ignition temperatures, meaning that the fuel air mixture can be compressed to higher levels without self ignition. Higher compression ratios lead to greater thermal efficiency. While your car at home might have a compression ratio of 10 or 11 to 1, a Formula One car, for example, has a compression ratio of over 18 to 1. This ratio measures the original volume of fuel air mixture versus the compressed final volume in the piston cylinder. And the higher, the better. These properties make hydrogen combustion a great option for aviation, for example. But surprisingly, there are still emissions. You probably heard that the only waste product of hydrogen is pure, clean water, which is partially true. 
but not in the case of combustion. In the case of gasoline, which is a hydrocarbon made up of long chains of hydrogen and carbon, when combusted, waste byproducts are produced like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide because of the carbon present. But with hydrogen, there is no carbon, and therefore there is no carbon dioxide, which is good. But the hydrogen-oxygen reaction combined with nitrogen, which is about 80% of our air, produces nitrogen oxides. This is harmful and causes acid rain and other health issues. But as research and development increase around hydrogen combustion, I'm sure these reactions can be made cleaner and cleaner over time, much like the internal combustion engines of today. The second way to produce energy from hydrogen is via fuel cell, a chemical reaction that reformulates hydrogen and oxygen in air into pure water and produces electricity. So as a fuel source for hybrid electric shipping boats or trains, this could make a lot of sense. Fuel cells have efficiencies around 60%, double the 30% or so for hydrogen combustion. So between these two approaches, we could produce energy for the grid, for planes, trains, and large shipping, all from hydrogen. Now, these discoveries in France aren't the only ones. Mali is currently pumping five tons a year from a small well, and there's clues propping up that there might be reserves in Australia. US and Iceland. And the researchers from France say that hydrogen is likely being produced geologically worldwide. If just 1% of these deposits were tappable, that's 500 million tons over centuries. Not a niche fuel, but a fossil fuel contender. These discoveries in France could spark thousands of new jobs, revive Lorraine, and even cut Europe's reliance on imported fossil fuels. Now, we will likely still need to produce clean green hydrogen to supplement deposits, especially if hydrogen is going to replace oil and natural gas worldwide. But initial deposits, just like we had for oil and gas, could be the boost and helping hand hydrogen really needs to take off. But what do you think? How big a deal is this discovery? And how many more might there be around the world in the coming years? Sound off in the comments below. And if you thought that was cool, you got to check out this video next. And until next week, I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.